Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. Now before I continue my pedestrian bridge series that started around three videos ago, I have to talk about two side tangents, which are influence lines and load patterns. Those will be covered in the next two videos very quickly before I can continue with my pedestrian bridge series. Uh, for the new viewers to this channel, basically we were, at the time of recording this video, doing a pedestrian bridge um, structure <coughs> project. And I found it necessary to talk about influence lines and load patterns before continuing said series, as it will be relevant and I will be talking about this pretty soon. Anyway, I'm going to talk today about influence lines, their theoretical meaning, and how to produce them in Autodesk Robot. So, alright, speaking about the theoretical meaning of influence lines. Now, the problem with influence lines is that somehow it is not as trivial as someone might want it to be. Kind of strange of a concept. <clears throat> For example, if I give you a beam, I will try to explain the difference between diagrams and influence lines as in explaining the question that those diagrams or lines answer. So a bending moment diagram, BMD, also a shear force diagram, answers the following question. What is the value of whatever, bending for example, or shear, at a point X under stationary load? What does this mean? It means that you are given usually the load. Let's draw it. Now, of course, the moment diagram for this one should be something like this. You would have a negative moment here, depending on the load and distances you may dip down and dip up, or you may just go one straight swoop here, it depends on the loading conditions to be honest. And then of course you have here a moment diagram that looks somewhat like this with WL square over 8. This is the bending moment diagram and it answers the following question. What's the moment at each point X under the given loads here? So the load here is not moving. This load is not moving and what is actually moving is your point X. So let me explain this as follows. If I want to take the reading at this point, if I take the reading at this point, the reading at this point, let's say it's positive 5. And for those of you who are listening and watching, I'm a fan of drawing the positive downside. So this is my positive, this is my negative. Of course, Hibbler's book does the vice versa, the opposite, but let's just deal with it like that. Okay, so this is positive 5. What does this positive 5 mean? It means that uh, under those loading conditions, if you move a distance here, this point, if we say this distance is, I don't know, one meter, which is this point, then the moment diagram on this point is actually five. If you go to another point, for example, this point here, and let's say that moment diagram's value is negative two or something, it means that this point corresponding on the beam has a moment of negative two. You see, the movement on the diagram, the movement on the diagram corresponds to the movement of the point and not the movement of the loads. The loads are not moving, but the point is moving. Uh, similarly, the shear force diagram, basically. Okay, so what about the influence line? Let's say you want to draw the inf influence line for the moment at this point. So, let me draw this first and explain what it means later. We are drawing the influence line of the moment at point, let's say point X. So now, of course, uh, there is multiple uh, ways of doing it. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to convert this into a structure one problem. But basically what it should be, it should look something like this. That's the influence line of the moment are, uh, at point X. Now, I just did this very quickly. I might be wrong here. I just did it at the back of my head. There is more uh, calculations here. There is the Müller-Breslau uh, theory you have to apply here to find the influence line for the moment at point X. So this might be inaccurate. I'm here just to talk about what it means to have an influence line like this. So what does this mean? To talk about this, let me explain exactly what the influence line answers. The influence line answers the following. What is the uh, moment value or shear value, depending on what the influence line is, at a stationary point under a moving unit load? That is what it means. It means that your point X is now stationary and the load is moving. So for example, what does, it, what does this point mean? If I, for example, select this point on the diagram and say this is my point of interest, for example, this point here, and I want to study this point and understand what it means. For example, this point has a value here, 
Now, I don't know what the value is. Let's say a value of 1. What does this mean? What does it mean, the value of 1 here? It means that if you put a load, a force, on this point, then the moment, bending moment, on point X is going to have a value of 1. Okay, so what does it mean, for example, that the value here, for example, let's use another color, what does it mean to say that the value here is, for example, 2? It means that if you put a force here, a unit force, here, then the moment on point X due to a force at this position is going to be 2. You see, it's always about the point X, and any point you're selecting on the influence line is basically the position of the force. For example, if you take this point here as an example and say, okay, what does it mean if this point is, for example, 4, let's say, of course, or 3? This means that if you put a force dead on X, a unit force, then the moment at that point is going to be 3. So you can see where I'm going with this. In the influence line, what is moving the horizontal distances on the bar do not represent the point on the bar, but represent the force on the bar. And uh, the moment is always around the same point. So let me recap now. The points on the horizontal X bar here are actually reflecting the positions of the moment points, whereas the forces are not moving. But the points on this influence line represent the position of the force, whereas the point is not moving. So here, the forces are stationary, and the point is moving in the diagram. But here, the point is stationary, and the forces are moving using this influence line diagram. So that is what an influence line is, and it has a lot of applications. Uh, one of them is to know how to pattern your live load. The second of them is to understand what the position, which position will cause the maximum moment. For example, here... Of course, I might be incorrect here because I've drawn this just back of my head. I need to actually calculate that stuff. But let's take a look here. Uh, this means, this position means that if you, for example, if you take this point, its moment is zero. Now, it might be incorrect. I'm not sure because I haven't calculated it. But it means that if you put a force here, then the moment on point X is going to be zero. Now, uh, truth to be said, I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe, maybe not. It must be calculated. I hope that my engineering sense is actually aiding here. I'm not really sure about this. So that is what an influence line is. So how do I do this not to this robot? Right? That's the big question now. All right. So to do this not to this robot, well, it's not really that hard. Let me just draw a moment. Let me just draw a beam here. Just to remind you that this is a, a determinate structure. It's even harder for an indeterminate structure. And you must have studied this in Hibla's book in Structures 1 or 2, depending on your university. So how can I do this in order to this robot? Well, let me just define a quick beam here. So 5, I don't know, like 5, 8, and maybe 11. Y in 0 and Z in 0. I'll apply that. Close. Uh, now, of course, just one word here. Uh, what you saw here is the bending moment diagram and an influence line of the moment at a point. You can, of course, draw the shear force diagram and the influence line of a shear at a point. You can also draw for torsion, for axial forces. So feel free to revise your Structures 1 education. All right, so we have our structure here. I'm just going to draw me a very blind beam here. I'm not, really, I'm not really interested in selecting correct sections here. I'm just drawing something. So I have my beam now, my beam. And uh, I'm going to fix it, for example, here. I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to two pins, put here two pins like this, and maybe give me an internal uh, hinge here. Of course, I need to open the 3D view just to make sense of it. I'm going to make me here an internal hinge. So, okay, geometry releases. Just make me a little internal hinge. This is, of course, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that you know the basics of bar, and you know the basics of releases, and those videos are linked above. If you are new to this channel, uh, why not give it a subscribe? I think it deserves a chance. So if you just run a blind analysis, of course, I have done this a million times, please refer to the basics. There is an instability, it seems, around Rx, because uh, what it means is that this 
is like a shaft because the roller allows rotation around X. This roller allows rotation around X, and this hinge is released around X. So this is a shaft. If you apply a torque roller here, if you apply a torque moment here, it will rotate like the shaft, like the drive shaft of a car. So I could just fix it to fix it. Haha. -ha. So I'm just going to fix it to fix the problem. Because I'm not here to start talking about instabilities. I'm here to talk about um, basically influence lines. So, okay. Uh, if you open diagrams from members, you see the moment diagram in the dead load. doesn't mean anything for me because I'm not here to talk about bending moment diagrams. I'm here to talk about influence lines. So first things first, I'll go to load table and eliminate the dead load because I want to have no loads on the beam. All right, so how can I make an influence line? Uh, to do it, of course, this is now a garbage moment, so I'll just delete them. To do an influence line, all you have to do is basically to apply a moving load first because... By definition, the load is moving in an influence line, so you need a moving load. Now, how do you do this? I think I had videos before, at least in the bridge series, I reached a position where I talked about moving loads. So I'm just going to go to loads and select me a special load and say, well, I'm needing a moving load. Now, it opens the moving load um, definition. I'm going to define me a unit load. So I'll go to this new moving load or new vehicle. I'll just define me a new vehicle. I call it point load, PL, hit OK button, and say, well, it's just a concentrated load with a value of 1, and that's all I want. I add this, close, and now I have it here. Now, the 1 was undefined in direction. You can see that here there is a load direction. 0, 0, negative 1 means nothing, nothing in X, <clears throat> nothing in Y, and down in Z. Now, how does the load move? Well, it will, def it will move along a line. So basically, you click on the route and click define to define a route. I'm going to move it on a line from here to here. You say yes, hit the apply button, and close. So now you have a route that is route number five, which is a polyline. Why is it called five? Because if you go to geometrical uh, uh, objects, you have geometrical object five. There is four. It's not used. I'll just delete it. So five... I think I messed up. No, yeah, 5 is there, and it's being used. I hope this didn't uh, make any problems. The step size, because it's a moving load, will step at 1. Maybe 1 is too much, so I'll step it at 0.5. And you could have a name for this. I'll call this moving unit load as a case. If you click the apply button, then you have a case, which is called moving unit load. If you run the analysis blindly now, you have created an analysis of a moving load. Now, uh, how do you see the moving load? Of course, if you click the case component here, then you can see the effect of the moving load. You can deduce the position from the moment diagram. Allow me to show you this. Give me a second. This is the envelope of the entire moving load. So if you go to diagrams on members, click MY, click normalize, then you see the envelope of the moving load. If you want to see the moving load itself, you go to moving load like this and you can select the case component. However, you do not see the force. I mean, I can deduce that the force is somewhere here. I can deduce it from the moment diagram, basically. But uh, you want to see the moment load, you cannot see it. And strangely enough, if you click on the show load symbols and show load values, you don't see it. So if you right click, so to show it, you right click, go to display, go to load, and select on forces generated automatically, because this force is, in fact, generated automatically, and you can see it now. There is also a cool animation if you want to see this. For example, you can, that's not an influence line. You can, for example, click here, click parameters, make a cool animation out of it. So make a nice spicy moment diagram like this, and then animate it, which is kind of nice. So you can see the animation of the moment diagram. Notice, this is not an influence line yet. So just we are clear with this. This is still not an influence line. All right, so far so good. So I made a moving load analysis. How can I make an influence line out of it? You see, we have analyzed the beam, so you go to results, and there is something called advanced results, and there is something called influence lines. There is more to it, but at least we want to talk about influence lines. If you click on that, of course, remember, what do you need for an influence line? Well, you need the target point that is not going to move, and you need to show something for this target point. You can, for example, show the shear force for this target point. You can show the bending moment for this target point. So let's try to understand this. Or let's say I'm going to choose this point, which is one quarter from the start. 
So, well, first of all, what's my element going to be? I select the element. I hope I can. I cannot. Okay, then I open the element numbers. This is element number one, obviously. So it's element number one. And the position is 0.25 from the start according to how you have drawn. So it's very important you remember how you have drawn it. If you don't remember, you open the local the axis dimensions, uh, the directions, and you can see the x-axis pointing from the start to the end. So it's 0.25, so it's somehow, somehow around here. Now what do we want to show? Let's say we want to show MY, which is the bending moment. If you click apply, you will see the influence line of the bending moment at that point. What does this mean? Well, it means the following. Let's first of all take a look on the values. When the moving unit load was at zero, the moment was zero. Well, is this true? Let's take a look. If I go to zero, remember, this is our target point here. When the load was at zero, there was no moment here. So indeed, there is no moment at that first point. Let's take a look here. When the load was at the 11th step, which is, I think, 5.5. Let me just check. Oh, yeah. When it reached the 11th step, which means at 5 meters, this is the value. The value is 1.13. Is that true? Is really? Now, look. This point here, this point that my, my mouse is around, is at 11th step with a value of negative 1.13. This means that the moment at the beginning of the beam, when the force was here, was 1.13. Is that true? Well, let's take a look. When the force was at its 11th step, so step 11, somewhere here, when the force was at its 11th step here, the moment at the 0.25 relative point was 1.13. Is it true? Well, let's take a look. Right click, properties, NTM, moment. And let's take a look. So it's 5 meters, 1 quarter of 5 is 1.25. So let's take a look at 1.25x. Here is your 1.25x, you can see it here. Indeed, the moment diagram for this load case, look, the moment diagram, when the load was at this point, at the quarter point, was 1.13, which is exactly what the influence line tells us. It tells us that the moment, di moment diagram here was 1.13. What about 1.02? Well, let's take a look. If I go to my component and return it back to the 10th component, so here, I'm here now. This is the moment diagram of the entire beam. What does the influence line say here? The influence line says that when the force as is at 4.5, indeed, the force is at 4.5, the influence says, line says, when the force is at 4.5, the moment at my target point is 1.02. So the moment at my target point here, one quarter, is 1.02. Let's take a look. Indeed, it's 1.02. So the moment at this position somehow is 1.02. And this is what the influence line is. And that's how we draw influence lines in robot. Of course, you can draw all kinds of influence lines. You can draw at any position, any influence line you want. All you have to do is to select the element and the position that you're interested in. You can show all kinds of influence lines. Of course, the major two influence lines are the bending moment MY and the in-plane bending moment MY and the in-plane shear force FZ. If you click apply, you can see both of them uh, there. So, well, that's how you make influence lines. And this is basically what, uh, what I want to discuss in this rather short video. And I know this might be short, a shorter of a video, but it's a very important legwork into the uh, implementation for pedestrian bridges later. So, uh, I don't know, I hope that you've enjoyed the video and that it was beneficial for you. Of course, if you have enjoyed the video, then please like, share, subscribe, and comment, and so on. Especially subscribing, because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we will catch you in the next video.